Am I hitting anything? How am I doing? Wait. Am I doing it? How'd I do? I was taking a look at my YouTube analytics and things like that. And I just wanted to say in my last video, 28.6% of people were actually not subscribed to the video. So if you have not subscribed, you should hit that subscribe button. I do have a lot of guide content and tips and tricks and fun little pop off stuff. I like to write community posts a lot. So if you guys comment on the community post tab and tell me what you guys want in the videos, that would be extremely helpful. So that points me in the right direction. But yeah, that's about it. All right, now we're going to do our tips and tricks video. I want you guys to give me some tips and tricks as well that I can add into this video, but this is going to be like my tips and tricks video. A lot of these tips I'm going to say are going to be for strictly mouse and keyboard. I am not a controller player. If you can reenact some of these moves on controller, then you can do that. I'm going to keep these tips and tricks extremely simple. So that way it's very easy to understand for for new the, the whole point is for like new players and also if new players do this they'll automatically be better is like the point of this right tip number one and this goes for controller and mouse and keyboard go to your settings and immediately you're gonna go to a mouse and keyboard this right here is going to be the most important journey of your life everybody's gonna be different every single person is going to be different you can't just go to someone's stream i see it too often you can't just go to someone's stream look at their sensitivity and be like that's me i'm gonna rock that sensitivity everybody's different you're gonna tinker around with these numbers a lot and you're gonna find something that's comfortable for you a rule of thumb that i like to have is if you're an arm gamer or a wrist gamer what i mean by that is if you aim and you're moving your wrist, essentially I can move my wrist and do a full 180. I can do a 180 by moving my wrist. When I move my arm, I can do a full 360. So when I swipe my arm across the table really fast, it's a full 360. So like if I just do this, it's a 360 or around a 360, you know what I mean? Versus my wrist is very like 180, is like I keep it very controlled. That's just me. There's some people with higher sensitivities that when they move their wrist, they'll do a, they'll do a full 360 by moving their wrist. It's just preference. My ADS speed is a little bit slower than the default, which is 1.0. And the reason why the ADS speed is a little bit lower is ironically enough, I got the idea from controller players. Because if you think about controller, I would say aim assist, essentially, if you look at controller players, their sensitivity, even if you move left and right, it's not as drastic as like, if you can move your like your 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 thumbstick on a controller left, right, you're not gonna drastically go left, right. You know what I mean? Controller is gonna bring you to like here to here. You know what I mean? It's still there, don't be wrong, you can still miss completely, but it's one of those things, it's not as drastic, right? So I thought to myself, like, in my ADS, if I slow down my ADS, it's basically gonna make sure that my speed, where I'm not, when I'm ADSing, I'm not gonna be like, let's say I'm shooting somebody, and he jumps over here, I'm not gonna be like, you know, doing one of this. So when I lower my ADS sense, it's very control, it's like, I can control, I can go from here, like, and I can just kind of, Keep it more in range. Sensitivity is your number one. It's your bread and butter. It's a thing you have to figure out first before anything in the game. I'm going to be honest with you. You sometimes won't find it for a little while. There is still pro players, top tier players that will mess around with their sensitivity for months. You'll even see a post on Twitter being like, oh, change my sensitivity today. Feeling really good about it. You know what I mean? Tip number two, FOV. It's a little bit of preference. I've seen a lot of players play at the 100. I've heard of some people aiming, like it helps with their aim a little bit. It's preference. Again, this game is all preference. Personally, the reason why I have 110 FOV is the higher the FOV, the more information that you see. Let's say you have this down. There's some people who play at 90 FOV. If I'm shooting somebody right here, I can't see what's over here. The whole point of the FOV is now I can see the targets to my left, right? So more information, move your FOV to where you want it, then tinker around with your sensitivity. This tip is strictly, you can do this as a controller player, I think downhill, but you can't really do it without being a controller player. Like, yeah, everybody is going to have their own key binds, whatever it may be. My key binds, I put my crouch on my mouse, which is right here. And I have jump on my space bar, 
but I also have jump as my mouse wheel down. The mouse wheel tactic for jumping on your mouse wheel, you're gonna use this for moving and healing. Let's say you need to heal, right? And you're on the run and there's a corner. So let's say somebody's behind me. I know I can get around this corner. What I'll do is, is I'll run, I'll slide and I'll jump. And while I'm sliding and jumping, I'll press my heal button, which is four. And immediately I'll hold crouch with my mouse button like this. I'll hold the button down and I'll just mouse wheel the whole time. Literally with one hand, if you want to, you can just, by holding crouch and mouse wheel, you're bunny hopping. So this is like a little trick. You could just bunny hop. Literally by holding down crouch. What that tip is, is now you start to add in A and D. Your movement ability of like A is left, D is right. So slide, jump, heal. And now I'm holding down crouch, holding down D. Holding down A. Do you see what I mean? Don't have toggle crouch. If it feels comfortable, find the button that feels comfortable for you. But for me, for bunny hop healing, it's very easy to basically hold this down. Now, the reason why you have mouse wheel is if, if you try to bunny hop by pressing spacebar, you'll notice that it won't be as consistent. As you see right here, it's not as consistent and you can mess up. See right there how I did a little slide? With the mouse wheel, the mouse wheel allows you to literally have no room for error. Like you can just mouse wheel and it, the best way to put it is if you played Counter-Strike back in the day when you used to bunny hop in Counter-Strike, it was mouse wheel and you'd bunny hop and you'd swing and you'd get like really far distances. Like everybody in Counter-Strike go like, you know, swinging left to right type of thing. Um, in Valorant, same thing. People in Valorant do the same thing. Crouching is, is, is or, or jumping with the mouse wheel is something that's been in games forever. And it's essentially like, imagine hitting your space bar 30 times in one second. Like that's what the mouse wheel does. The easiest way to do number three, which is the, 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 the bunny hopping, is practice your crouch. You can put crouch uh, on control if you want as well. And you just control and just mouse wheel. Now, with that being said, the whole mouse wheel, wall jumping. Wall jumping is unbelievably easy on mouse and keyboard. It's one of these things where you're going to practice it. The best way to practice, the best way that I practice, is wall jump off of anything flat everywhere you go. It makes rotating fun. It makes you a hard target to hit. So somebody's shooting me, right? Somebody's shooting me. I'm like, oh, God. Okay, somebody's shooting me. Somebody's shooting me. Somebody's shooting me. I'm bunny hopping. I'm bunny hopping. Bunny hopping, right? I'm going to slide. And then I'm going to get to this wall. Bunny hop like that. So the reason why it's unbelievably easy on mouse and keyboard is you're going to slide and you're going to jump at the wall. You're not going to press crouch. You're not going to press anything. All you do is when you're about to hit the wall, mouse wheel, jump at the wall, mouse wheel. That's it. You can honestly wall ride as well like that. So like wall riding is essentially just like, like or wall surfing. Sorry. So what you do is you grab the wall, you hold D and then you jump off. So it allows you to be a little bit more mobile. That's a little bit advanced tip, but. As you can see, it's like, uh, they, they used to call it surfing. You jump at the wall, hold D, then jump off. So again, jump at the wall, wall surf, jump off. This is like, that's an advanced tip. You don't need to do that. Easiest tip, apex for beginners wall jumping. This is the best place to practice, by the way, this wall, because it's, it's perfectly flat. It's perfectly flat, easiest. So again, now when you start to get advanced with it is when you're running from somebody, if you run at the wall at an angle, so don't run at it head on, because if you run at it head on, it, it's only gonna, I feel like it doesn't take you that far, right? Now, if you run at it at an angle, jump at it and turn your mouse. That's where the direction goes. That's where it's going to take you really far. So run out here, go at an angle, turn your mouse. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just like when you run at a wall straight on, it's going to just bring you back kind of like you don't have like exact trajectory of where you're going. Versus when you jump slide, you really can get far. Now, after your wall jump, always try to hit crouch because you'll do this. And then, so it, uh, the, 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 the advanced tip for jumping, for wall jumping, is when you wall jump, now you can enter the, wall, the bunny hopping. Tip number five. This is going to be your bread and butter of Apex Legends. You'll know the decision better than anybody in the heat of the moment. Armor swapping is everything. One of the most important mechanics and actually one of the easiest to do. Even on a controller, you can practice it. It's not as detrimental as a lot of people think. You even can watch it in competitive and pro play. As you get higher in tiers, a controller player, when you're armor swapping, you just have to be extremely aware and you have to be conscious of what you're trying to loot. Because as a controller player, you're basically, you're going to be standing still. 
So when you armor swap in that box, you're thinking to yourself, I just want the armor. Just click the armor. That's it. And then get out of the box. The thing about mouse and keyboard is mouse and keyboard can essentially loot whatever the hell we want because we're like this. We're just, we can take our sweet time in the box if we want to without really any worry, right? We can actually armor swap last if we want to. This brings me to the most important part of the tip. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu. Turn this off. It will get you killed so many times if you have this on. So that way, when you go to armor swap and if you get shot, you're going to stay in the death box. So if I'm full HP and I have no armor, I'm going to hold E or whatever the button is. I'm going to grab the armor and immediately I'm going to slide out of it. I'm going to move. This will allow you to handle third parties so much easier because... And again, it's going to be situational. Sometimes you won't be able to armor swap. Sometimes you have to take the fight. But a lot of the times, you'll judge the situation. This just comes with time. This is just a tip that I'm giving you that if you kill somebody and his team is coming and you're cracked, instead of popping a battery, you know, going one of these numbers, trying to pop a battery, you can simply go to the armor box and swap. Tip number six, find a, a legend that you like. There is obviously different legends for different people. But the thing is, is finding a legend that you like and mastering that legend. It's a comfort pick, if you will. Every game has that comfort pick, a comfort weapon. What I did in the beginning is I was a Wraith player, right? Wraith allows you to be aggressive. You'll learn her abilities. You'll learn when to queue, when not to queue, when to portal. You know, there's a lot of times in, in competitive play as the high, 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 high tiers, you'll see a teammate get knocked and immediately the Wraith is like, Portaling, queuing, getting to a building, dropping the portal, saving their teammates with a portal that was done instantaneously off of zero thought process just because that Wraith player is an experienced Wraith player. Um, that sucks. Tip number seven is honestly improving your aim at Apex Legends is just practice the game. You just have to practice the game. One thing you can do, uh, you'll see a lot of top tier players. What we'll do is we'll invite a friend into the firing range and it's not entirely the best way to practice like game sense it's just to practice raw aiming is you're going to do a thing called slide outs so you, somebody goes three two one you slide out and you start shooting each other and you're practicing these close engagements if you want to jump in their face and get close practice that grab certain guns that help you practice that one thing that i do that i think personally helps me is i develop a muscle memory with games for me it's more of like the flick i call it the flick so what happens is it kind of goes back to my number one tip. My number one tip was find your sensitivity, right? Now, once you find your sensitivity, what I like to do is I like to think to myself certain scenarios. If I'm chilling in a building and I'm shooting somebody, right? And I end up knocking somebody, but I, I get up a full reload. Somebody can jump on my face to my left, right? Somebody can out automatically jump my face to the left. And what happens is you have to react to that. How fast can you react to that and be as precise as possible? So what I'll do is, is I'll practice my snaps from you know, right to left, left to right. And what happens is, is I want to see how accurate I can be while doing it. So it's one of those things I was a little short. I hit that target, right? So I was a little short. I hit that target, right? So then I'm like, okay, I'm like judging my wrist a little. I was a little short again, right? So then you develop and you get faster. So I'm, I'm controlling a little bit more. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I just practice this, like that snap technique. Tip number eight, when you drop, always try to find a drop spot that there's nobody there right like if, if you want to improve you want to find some weapon loadouts you want to find some good guns and, and things like that when you're dropping loot everything i say this in one of my rank guides and the reason why you do that is you don't know what you're going to find in different areas too many times people land and they have this like set loadout in their brain they grab just heavy ammo because they were like oh i, I really want to use a flatline this game and they're skipping over light then you walk by and you find a light, a, a purple light mag. And you're like, ah, I didn't know. Then you walk over and you find a, a, a purple, you find an R301. And you're like, oh, I wish I grabbed the R301 now. I wish I grabbed all that stuff because my R301 will be stacked. You'll start to pick and play and pick and choose what your early game loadout is going to be. Don't worry about what your early game loadout is. It's early game. Your guns are going to change as you go on. You're going to swap things out. You're going to remember where certain things were. So... When you're looting, grab absolutely everything you possibly can 
and then start to switch stuff out as you find, right? So you'll see me a lot of times, I'll just practice, I'll, I'll, I'll grab a bunch of stuff. Like I'll grab an R301 and I'll grab a Volt, right? And then I'll find a, a purple heavy mag with a lot of heavy ammo, like a lot of heavy ammo. I'm like, okay, I found a purple light mag. All right, I found a purple heavy mag with a lot of heavy and I don't have the heavy gun yet. I'm gonna hold on to all that heavy and that heavy mag and I'm gonna start I'm going to start like one siding one gun. So if I have a light and energy gun, I'm going to drop all my energy ammo, except maybe like a stack and keep all my light, right? Whereas like if I don't find the heavy gun, screw it. I still have my main gun and I still have a clip of my of my secondary, which I'll be fine about. Tip number nine, I guess we can include this, right? Tip number nine is finding a place to drop. You'll learn the map. There is certain spots that are better than others higher loot than others like such as when you go to bonsai on olympus you're gonna get a lot more loot you go to on you know king's canyon you have crash site which is filled with loot versus if you go on world's edge and you land overlook overlook's not gonna have as insane loot as let's say skyhook some places are going to be hotter than others it is your decision on whether or not you want a very intense fast play you know fast game where you just want to get in the fight and there's other places where you can land that are very very chill and you won't have the most insane loot in the whole world unless nobody drops there but you'll 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 find some some pretty good spots tip number 10 is in apex legends hit fire is extremely powerful with the majority of weapons. I wouldn't say it's broken, but it's pretty damn close. Where if somebody's in front of me, right? And you're and you're ADSing right here, you're a little bit faster and have more movement where you can actually get better at the game. And you can actually jump slide in certain directions and bunny hop and move. Like I can essentially like, you can get to a point where you can actually bunny hop like while move, you know, while shooting your gun. So, um, hip fire is really, really good. Where you can essentially just hip fire and then slide. You can, you know, keep that movement going, keep that movement going, or whatever it may be. Or you just, you know, you're not missing a bullet. You're not missing a bullet with certain guns on the hip fire, especially if you use like the R301. It still works with the R301, where you're just like be in someone's face. You're like, you'll see it happen all the time, where like people will just like, you know hip fire when you get to a certain range it's extremely extremely strong hip fire is another bread and butter of apex legends there's a lot of bread and butters of apex legends but that's definitely one of them this is going to be super 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 easy for mouse and keyboard mouse and keyboard has the super jumps that like it, it, it's, it's it's honestly it's brainless so what you do is is the second you press e all you do is mouse wheel down oh it's your jump ready that's it you'll super jump now, the re how to basically control the direction is the hard part. So if you look up in super jump, you go a little bit farther, right? So it all depends on your trajectory. So a lot of the times you see pro players will look up, super jump, and we're getting on the ledge. You can do this on controller. Very, very difficult. What you can do to make yourself a different target later on is like, you can essentially super jump and then jump on it. Super jumping, uh, one easy way to practice it is go in Pathfinder, you'll put a zipline in front of you. And all you do is you press E, mouse wheel. E, mouse wheel. Oh, wait. That's it. One of my last tips I'm going to explain is the dolphin dive, right? The dolphin diving is how to get as far as possible across the map when dropping. And there's a certain technique, and it has to do with the numbers on the left-hand side. I don't like the numbers dipping between... I usually keep the number between 140 and 133. Like once you drop to 133, 132, go up to 138, 140. Then you're gonna level out. Let's say I want to get all the way over here because it's super, super far away, right? I technically would wait, but I wanna show you guys how to extend. It's pretty much, you drop down and you level out, right? So I'm going flat. I'm leveling out flat. See the number? I drop down. All right, I'm at one, uh, 140. 132, drop down, 138, 138, 138, 132, go down. So this is that dolphin diving tech, dolphin dive technique. So pretty much 130, I'm gonna drop down, I'm gonna level out. Now as I'm leveling out, I just wanna get really, really far, right? Now, this is just one little technique, is 132 to 138, and I can't drop anymore or I'll end up sinking. So you'll find the certain distances, like where if I drop, if I try to get some more distance off of that i wouldn't 
go far one of the tips was to loot everything right i'm gonna open these pills i'm literally spamming my e button i don't care i'm looting everything so you see in the inventory i have an re45 i have a shotgun bolt and an energy mag there it is i have the now i have an energy gun right now i'm thinking to myself i'm like you know what? i'm saying to myself i go well i have all this energy ammo or i have these these guns but what do i really want what what am i really wanting so right now i know that i could want a heavy gun I know that I could keep the energy, so I'm keeping the energy for now. So now I've set in my head that I want a light gun, but I also want a shotgun, right? That's the that's my next gun that I want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this, right? Because I've I've said I said to myself I want a shotgun. I, I I that's what I want. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this now because I found a gun that I really really like. I'm actually gonna swap out some ammo, right? I'm not going to drop the shotgun bolt because I really, I still really, really want the shotgun. So now I end up swapping the ammo out for the gun that I want as I'm playing. As I'm moving, I'm finding, I end up swapping, right? Which is where I end up finding the gun that I want and the gun that I, the gun that I need. Now, if I got into a fight right now, I can basically handle somebody with two different guns. And not feel pinched. So he's low. So right there when I armor swap is even though I have purple and completely I got worried, right? I got worried that I was gonna get like be in trouble. So I armor swap automatically. Because I'm thinking to myself, there could be a third party that's going to happen, right? Pay attention to the kill feed and to the weapons being used in your vicinity. If I hear an R301 and I see somebody in the kill feed die by an R301, I know that that fight is happening in front of me. Did the Pathfinder make it up? Oh, I got stuck. So again, bunny hop and healing with Octane. I'm going to do the bunny hop heal. The zone's coming, but you're seeing how I'm able to bunny hop heal and make myself go pretty far. So now I'm basically going to reset my angle. So the armor swapping I mentioned to you, I'm already armor swapping. So the... Everybody jump pad. Oh, it doesn't matter. Valor is really strong. So the armor swapping was something that I wanted to show you guys too. That was really, really quick. I armor swapped and I was ready for the third party. But I just was too low of HP uh, in that scenario. But that was another good example, in my opinion, of showing armor swapping, looting really fast, and dropping the dolphin dive dropping. So those are three potential tips that we can show. I mean, I have so many videos that we can honestly like pull from armor swapping uh, of why armor swapping is so important and how you can do it at higher levels. Uh, but that was a quick little tip to show that and i think those are like 10 or 11 tips for newer 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 players that i think everyone can get i just want to say real quick um <clears throat> for all my new people that are getting into apex legends i just want to say one thing headphones aren't necessary okay so you do not need headphones at all i know what you're thinking you're probably gonna be like but no go like i need to hear shit. um i'm gonna just tell you right now it's just you don't need them you don't um i know you you think you want to hear some, like sometimes you hear like you might hear a couple guns here and there but when it really matters you won't you won't hear anything and sometimes when you do have your headphones on you hear things that aren't even there um so headphones not required really big plus uh, especially if you're a parent that's you know buying a computer or their you know a, a system for their son or daughter um you do save money on the headphones uh which is really really cool no, they do not have a DLC for audio as well. So you don't have to buy that. So honestly, another budget-friendly game. Absolutely. Absolutely a budget-friendly game. So uh, just know that. Just know that. Just want to make sure that everyone is on the same page um, with how Apex Legends can be.